Hello, welcome to your physics teacher. Today we're looking at section 5.3 from the Nelson textbook at the conservation of energy type questions. So I'm going to answer two for you in this video, that way you get a good understanding. And please feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section below. So starting from question two, a golf ball of mass 45.9 grams is launched from a height of 8 meters above the level of the green at a speed of 20 meters per second. At the maximum height above the green, the ball is moving at 12 meters per second. Assume, assume there is no air resistance acting on the ball, and they want us to calculate the following for the golf ball. The total mechanical energy at the start, assuming that the level of the green to be the reference level, the maximum height of the ball above the green and the speed of the ball when it strikes the green. So in this question we have a golf question and then it's launched from some initial height with some initial speed and they give us the maximum height is what we're looking for. But they do mention that at the maximum height we know the speed of the object and we can assume there's no air resistance. So let's sort of visualize this. In this question, we are given that the mass of the golf ball is 45.9 grams. Uh, we're going to have to be changing that to kilograms. So we just divide by 1,000. And they also give us that the height from which this golf ball is launched is eight meters above the level green. So the level green is just the lowest height. So we are eight meters above. And the launching speed, so the initial velocity, is 20 meters per second. And they're telling us that we should set up the coordinate system such that at the lowest height that's where we're going to be having the reference level of height to be zero, which means this is our zero potential line because potential energy will be zero at the ground level. And if we were to follow the trajectory of the golf ball, we're given that at the maximum height, the velocity is going to be 12 meters per second. So the velocity at the top now notice here that I didn't put any component at an angle at the top because we're assuming that the vertical velocity at the top is going to be zero. That's where the vertical is momentarily at rest, but the horizontal is still going to continue moving along to the right. So that's why I put this velocity to only be component to the right. Oh, I got the wrong value. I should have put 12 meters per second. And what, is, what are the things that they're asking us to find? They're asking us to find the maximum height. So H top. They want us to calculate the velocity just before it hits the green. And they want us to calculate the total mechanical energy at the start, so E mech initial. Okay, so the first thing we're, that we're going to do is calculate the total mechanical energy initially. And the mechanical energy in this case is only composed of the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Where the formulas for kinetic energy is going to be a half mv square initial. And for potential is the initial height. So the initial height was what we were given, which was the eight meters. And the initial speed we were given is 20 meters. And the mass we convert to kilograms. So all we have to do in this case is plug in the values and calculate them. Putting this into the calculator, we get approximately 12.8 joules. For part B, they were asking us to calculate the height at the top 
and here we're going to use the conservation of energy idea that all the mechanical energy initial is going to be the mechanical energy at the top or even at the mechanical energy at the final. In this case, this means that this system is considered to be isolated, so all of the change in mechanical energy should be zero, regardless of which point that we're interested in. So let's try to put this together. So in an isolated system, the change in mechanical energy is going to be zero. So the mechanical energy final minus mechanical energy initial should be zero, which means that the mechanical energy initially should be equal to the mechanical energy at the end. Now keep in mind that with this formula, we can choose what the initial and what the final is going to be. So we can change that around. So in this case, we can take that the initial is right when the ball is first launched, which is what we calculated from before. But the final, we're going to consider the final to be right at the maximum height. So if we go back to our diagram, at the maximum height, our golf ball is moving with 12 meters per second, so it has some kinetic energy. And we're trying to find the height at the top, so it has some potential energy. So mechanical energy is going to be the sum of kinetic and potential. And again, our 12.8 joules comes from part A. We calculated the initial, kinetic, the initial mechanical energy already. And the potential energy at the top is MGH top plus a half MV top square. What we're going to do now, we want to isolate for the height so I'm going to move the a half mv top to the other side of the equation. And to isolate for the height, I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient, which is mg, which will give us an expression for the final, not the final, for the height at the maximum value. And now let's put in our values to calculate the height at the top. We get approximately 21.1 meters. That seems reasonable, given that the initial height at the top was the initial launching height was eight meters and it achieved the 21.1 meters at the maximum height. Seems reasonable for a golf ball. So this question, we might be correct. And for part C, we want to find out the speed of the ball when it strikes the green. And like I was mentioning before, our change in mechanical energy is going to be zero. So now we just have to set our mechanical energy initial to be equal to our mechanical energy at the end but the end we're considering to be just before it strikes the ground. So we recall that all the mechanical energy had initially was 12.8 joules. And the forms of mechanical energy that it will have at the end is going to be EG final plus a half, sorry, plus EK final. But because we did set the height to be zero at the ground level of the green, the potential energy at that height will be zero because the height value is zero. That's our zero potential line. So all of the mechanical energy had initially will be converted into all of the kinetic energy at the end. And we can calculate the kinetic energy at the end with a half mv final square.
So let's isolate for the V final term. We're going to divide both sides by the mass. And to get rid of the half, we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by 2. Which means to isolate for the V final, just take the square root on both sides, which gives you the final velocity to be 2 times 12.8. And the mass was 0 0.0459 kilograms. So let's put this into the calculator. So the final speed that we get is 23.6 meters per second. That also seems reasonable. Great, uh, so please stay tuned and hit like if you liked the video so far and subscribe to watch even more videos. And I'm just gonna solve one more question from this section in the next section. Okay, for question number three, many roller coasters have loops where cards roll on a track that curves sharply up into the air. At the top, the people are upside down and usually screaming. For safety reasons, many of these roller coasters must have a minimum speed at the top of the loop. In the roller coaster shown in that figure, the card must have a minimum speed of 10 meters per second at the top of the loop to make it around safely. Assuming that the roller coaster starts from rest at the top of the hill and there is no friction on the roller coaster, what is the minimum height of the first hill? Let's first look at the assumptions. And, and here they're telling us that there is no friction. What this implies in energy type questions is that no energy is going into thermal energy. So all the energy of the system will stay inside the system. Another way of saying this, we could put it in a mathematical expression, is that the change of energy of the system is going to be zero. This means that the system that we're going to consider is just going to be that of the roller coaster. And in this case, the change of energy of the system because the only forms of energy that we have to consider, because we have no friction in this case and there's no air resistance, we're only going to consider the changes of potential energy and kinetic energy. So our expression could simplify to the change in potential plus the change in kinetic is going to be zero. And further simplifying this, this means that all of the initial potential energy plus all the initial kinetic energy will equal to all of the potential energy at the top, I mean all the energy at the top, which is the final, plus the kinetic energy at the top, which we can consider to be the final as well. What this is showing us is that the mechanical energy that the roller coaster has initially is equal to all of the mechanical energy we have at the top of the loop. Now all we need to identify then is what is going to be the initial kinetic and potential and what is going to be the final potential and kinetic to put into our equations. In order to do this, we have to assume that the ground level is going to be our zero potential line. So let's put in our ground level to be the height of zero. This sets up our zero potential line. And thus also simplifying that the potential energy we can measure it from the ground level. The second assumption that they were giving us is that this roller coaster is starting from rest at the top of the first hill. So the initial kinetic energy is going to be zero. And the only thing that we know is that the height at the top of the second loop is 16 meters. And the speed at the top of the loop 
has to have a minimum speed of 10 meters per second in order to just make it safely. So let's put this into our formula here that we derived. And this is where it gets interesting because we are not given the mass of the roller coaster. And notice that if we were to simplify this equation, the mass will cancel out on both sides. How does it cancel out? Imagine that we divide the left side by the mass and the right side by the mass. So the mass will be canceling out in each of the terms. Thus simplifying our expression to gh initial equals to gh top plus a half v top square. And because we want to isolate for the initial height that was required to start the roller coaster from, we also then have to divide both sides by g. So let's put in all of our values. We had the height at the top of the loop was 16. The speed at the top of the loop was 10 meters to just make it safely around the loop. And this will simplify our initial height to be approximately 21.1 meters. So for this question here, in order for this roller coaster to start from rest, the initial height should be 21.1 meters which makes sense because it should be above 16. And notice that one of the tricks that we showed here is that the mass, we don't need to be given the mass, we can cancel it out by just putting into the equations and then simplifying it. So that's gonna be useful in this type of questions for with energy. You could usually cancel out the mass depending on the energy forms involved.